Good morning, all you family of victory and whoever else is listening. Um, I just had a word today that the Lord actually dropped in my heart last night. It was a scripture that back in the early days of my walk with the Lord, uh, I was a very fearful person. Um, I felt very alone. And so God gave me a scripture and I wanted to read it to you today because uh, as the governor has said that we're to shelter in place, uh, to to be uh, cautious and, and only go out in situations where it's necessary to get groceries um, or if there's a medical situation. Um, I believe it's a time when we can just put our focus on the truth of the word of God. And, and it says, perfect love cast out all fear. God loves us with a, a perfect love. Nothing will separate us from the love of God, even if you've made mistakes. And I felt today somebody, or maybe more than one somebody out there is feeling like, well, you know, I don't know if God would take care of me. I've just, I've just made a mess of things. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here today and I was a big mess several years ago and God took care of me and he continued to work in my life to bring me to where I am today, where I could help other people. And I would have never thought that at that time in my life. So just remember, God isn't finished with you yet today. I don't know who that's for, but somebody out there is feeling like, you know, I've made so many mistakes that there's no way that God would, would even maybe protect you. And God will protect you because he loves you. It isn't based on what you've done or who you are. It's because he created you for a destiny and a purpose. He has a plan for your life. You've been created by Almighty God and he loves you and he knows the plans he has for you. And they're for a future and a hope, it says in Jeremiah. So you don't need to be concerned today about your reputation. Start thinking about God's reputation. He's a good God and he loves you. And this is the scripture, it's from Psalm 27, and it's a Psalm David uh, shared, and it's written in the word of God, if you wanna look in Psalm 27, and I'm looking at verse 13. It says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed. I would see the goodness of the Lord, goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, we used to sing hymns that said, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be, and that's true. But God saved us to bring us in to success, to life with prosperity, with health, with wholeness, with peace, with joy. All those things were accomplished at Calvary for us. God wants us to live that way. And so it goes on and says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. If ever we need a courage, this is the day and the hour we need to start living in the courage that Jesus uh, died for us to have a confidence that our God is not only willing and able, but you, he knows about. And those things that you have need of, he's going to see that you're taken care of as you look and wait on the Lord. It says, be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. I pray today that your heart is strengthened. You know, we gain strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's how we gain our strength. It's in the joy of knowing who God is, uh, the character of God, who God is as, as your father in heaven, who's watching over his word to perform it. It says in Isaiah 55, he hastens. That means he, he hurries up. He, he performs his word. It says, as the rain comes down from the heavens and waters the earth, so does God's word come forth and it will not return void. It will accomplish that for which it was sent. And that word was sent for you. The word was made flesh. That's Jesus. He was sent for you to have eternal life, to have all that you need. It goes on at the beginning of Psalm 1 and it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In my life at that time, years ago when I was so afraid, I needed to know that there was someone who cared about me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? It even says in the scripture uh, later on, I think it's in verse 10, it says, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. And uh, my, my parents had not forsaken me, but I was an adult. I was living by myself with three children. So I needed, I always looked to a person to take care of me. And the Lord said, no, 
I will take care of you. So today, wherever you are, it says in this Psalm, one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. He will hide me and he will set me high upon a rock. Those who've built their house upon the rock, it says in Matthew chapter seven, that house, when the winds blow and the storms come, it will not fall down. So I encourage you today, put your hope and your trust in the one who has said in his word, in these promises, in the word of God, in the Bible, that he has made promises, a covenant with you. You know, when David um, tackled that giant, we hear that story of David and, you know, he threw those stone or shot those stones from his slingshot and he killed that giant. Do you really believe those stones killed that giant? No, God killed that giant. It was David's faith in a covenant that he had with God. He said, you uncircumcised Philistine. He was saying, you who has no covenant, you who has no covenant with the living God are not going to defeat me because I do have a covenant with God. And he loaded up that slingshot, put those stones in there, and he killed that giant. Today, you need to kill that giant of fear in your life. David did that because like he talked about in here, he spent time as he was just out there with the sheep, you know, as a shepherd, he was out there, but he was in communication with the Lord. And as he was, when the lion and the bear, it says, came, he defeated both of those. He didn't do that by his own strength. He did that by the strength of the Lord. Today, you can defeat fear by the strength of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. We are the people of God. And God said in Hebrews, I will make a covenant with you. I will be your God and you will be my people. And I will write my laws on your heart. What does that mean? He's going to guide you from the inside out. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And as you listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit, we're living in today where you need to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. If you pray and ask, just wait a minute and you will hear a still small voice speaking the truth of the word of God. Just be sure you're asking the right people. Ask people of faith that are surrounding you. Ask the Lord most of all, because he knows you from the inside out and he knows what will help you. And he will offer that help to you as you seek him and you wait on him and believe that he will come in the land of the living. And the old, in the Bible, I used to read it, called it, I would have fainted. And I did feel like I was going to faint, but I didn't. And here I am today. I have a wonderful life. I have a wonderful family. And I would never have thought that at that point in my life. Let's, let's believe the word. Let's believe God. And let's trust him right now that he will deliver us from all evil. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed today and bless someone else. Find somebody who just needs a good word. Text them, call them, uh, FaceTime them. Let them see that you're doing really well because the joy of the Lord is your strength today. Amen. See you another time.